Okay, so today we're going to do a toxicity test to find out the impact that an acetone spill would have on a wastewater treatment plant. Okay, so in order to carry out this test, we need to have a sample of the influent we want to test, which is a pre-prepared 10% acetone solution, some synthetic feed based on the OECD 209 formula, although you could use a molasses mixture, some water to act as the oxygen carrier, a Stratox laboratory respirometer, which contains a sample of the activated sludge from the wastewater treatment plant, which is aerated and kept at the temperature the treatment plant runs at, which you can see is 21.9 degrees Celsius. Um, in order to do this test, we're going to start off um, and add in a range of concentrations of the acetone, starting from a controlled sample and increasing in strength to four, six, eight, ten percent acetone. Okay, so to start to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in the actual acetone sample. Just a standard pipetting process. So none in the control chamber, because that gives us the actual activity level of the bacteria without any toxicant. 2 mils into the second tube. Then 4. Finally, 10. Next, we're going to add in the synthetic feed. This always goes in the same amount into each tube, so there's no impact on the toxicity assessment from the amount of synthetic feed in each chamber. We're going to add two mils into each chamber. And finally, we're going to add in the water. So we're going to start with 10 mils in the control chamber, and then we're going to gradually decrease the concentration in the same ratio as the acetone was added. So we're going to start with 10 mils. Chamber is going to have eight. And six. finally two in the fifth chamber. There's no water added to the sixth chamber because this is the highest concentration of acetone. Now we're going to allow those to uh, be spun up in the temperature controlled water bath. This will allow the samples to oxygenate and to come to the correct operating temperature for the test. We are now going to input the data into the computer controlling the system. So first thing we're going to do is select the type of test. You can see here that there are several types of tests available on the Stratox system from process optimization, uh, short term BOD testing, activated sludge health monitoring, a nitrification inhibition test and respiration inhibition which is the one we're going to do today. 
we're going to select to do an EC50 test and we're going to put in our test substance concentration units in percentages. Okay. Next thing we are going to do is set up the sample data. So we're going to put in the type of compound that we're testing and we're going to put in its relative concentrations. Because it was a 10% solution, the test concentrations in each of the chambers are 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And we can put in any comments we want for later use. Once we've done that, we are now ready to start our test. So we click on the start button, which starts the respirometer and the computer talking to each other and recording the test data. You can see that by the two vertical lines here. So the final thing we're going to do is add in our activated sludge. We add eight mils of the activated sludge to each of the test chambers. It's important to put that slowly to avoid air bubbles being added into the mixture. And finally, we're going to transfer in the oxygen sensitive electrodes into each of the test chambers. It's just important to remove any air bubbles from the mixture, which is actually quite easy to do with the design of these electrode holders. And what we should start to see now is that the respirometer is starting to record the oxygen uptake rate of each of the mixtures in the test tubes. The control we expect to respire the fastest, so the red line which is from tube 1 should consume the oxygen most quickly and have the steepest slope. And all the others should have varying slopes. The actual level of oxygen in each chamber is irrelevant. It's the oxygen uptake rate that we want to measure, so therefore it's the slope that's important. We'll leave this to respire for about five to 10 minutes maximum until we get some nice even slopes, and then we can do the analysis.